presentation right now. And uh, what's up, people? What's going on? Thanks, Chris. What's up, everybody? Say hello. Hey. Hey. Rose McClurg, and also Ryan Clare with us. Hey, Brandon Clare. Dempsey here at Worst Team Training. And Barry is back over there. What's up, Barry? He's like, Barry's <laughs> behind the scenes, man. He's, he's a dude. So uh, what's up, everybody? We just wanted to come to you tonight. Uh, we're, we're doing a conference out at Barry's Church here in Janesville. We've been talking about that for the past month. Uh, but the main thing is that we've been just talking about worship. We've been talking about the reasons of why we gather. Mm -hmm. But it's not about a style, but it's more about authenticity. So that's our listeners, our watchers right now are um, going through that. So you guys that are watching, uh, we want you to comment because we can, um, you know, just like that, we can find out who's on the phone. And then you can just type in your comment, question, we'll get to it. Same thing, playback. Uh, thank you guys for watching and listening. So what's up with this worship stuff? What do you think that, you know, we've been doing this now for like 20 years. We've got the same sound. We have this, uh, i got to be like somebody else church. I have to be like this album that I see. But um, do you really think, is that where we're headed? Or are we, do we really need, is there a call to go back to basics? What do you think? I, th I mean, I would say just out of the gate, the biggest thing for us in the conferences that we've done, anybody who's seen any of us play in the last... Uh, year has always been the reaction has always been coming to the table and saying I just love how real you guys are like I literally feel the pureness of what you're doing and a lot of that is because we're not trying to let production get in the way you know it's like when you when you hear those you hear you see those moments like in a sermon where you know your pastor is preaching a sermon and then he just stops in the moment and just says you know, I just want to be real with you this week, this happened or whatever. And all of a sudden, everybody is engaged again, mm -hmm. is paying attention again. And I think with worship, especially with where it is right now, the thing that I'm finding is that for us, some, some of the best nights in our sets are when I'll completely forget the words to a song or we have to start the song over and everybody in the room just laughs. And all of a sudden, they're like, loosened up again and, and ready to re-engage because they, they feel just an honesty and a transparency yeah. mm -hmm. about what we're doing. And a lot of it has nothing to do with the lights and the show. I mean, in a lot of ways, you should be able to strip all that away and have it be just as good. Yeah, but you realize you're taking that away from people who want yeah. that. Yeah. So, But is that, you know, are we, are we, I mean, we're talking about this at, at dinner, you know, are yeah. we... Are we intrigued by the, uh, what was it, Kevin, you, you call it the, the worship, or no, uh, Ryan, I can't remember who said it. Uh, yes, he said it. <laughs> right there. Jeremy. Jeremy, Jeremy come on in, Jeremy. Come on, come on stand, stand right, right next to Kevin here. <laughs> okay. You were talking about the worship of production. Can you like, can you come down from your clouds oh, and join us? Scooch in. So we can get you in the camera. And you're already on audio here, so we got your audio. But you, we were talking about the worship of production. This is Jeremy, everybody, right here. Hi. You can barely see him. He doesn't want. I don't think he wants to be seen. So the now, now what's his name? Is uh, he's out. Anthony's Anthony's just coming. I'm just, just saying. All right, so I should lay across us. <laughs> Come on. And we're all we're all friends. We're, we're all friends, Anthony. So it's all I know, good. I know. Just join the club, man. So. <laughs> So what's, so what's up? Um, worship of production or worship of the tr one true God? Wow. Um, yeah, I don't know. It just seems that worship has become worshipped. Like that mm. whole, and maybe it's the, the production aspect of it, but it just seems like it's gotten so big and so grand that there's a disconnect with people. And it's more... You know, what, what's the disconnect? Maybe that you can come and just kind of observe and watch this grand spectacle. Is that, is that like stepping in the Walmart? You know, because <laughs> people do the same thing. They just stand there and they don't move. Yeah. You know, yeah. or like going to McDonald's. Yeah. That's a bad and it's, word. it's easier to do it because we're just concerned about how we present it yeah. and having it clean and perfect. And um, I don't know that we're focusing always on actually worshiping the Lord with that. I don't know. No, so um, why, why does it need to be perfect, Kevin? Why does it need to be perfect? Um, 
Is, is that it, really a goal? We, right, but maybe we've told ourselves, or maybe just our own expectations of what we do, we put on ourselves, or maybe others put on our, put on us, but mm -hmm. I don't think, the, I know the Lord doesn't, mm -hmm. you know. He, he calls us to come humbly before him, but boldly, but humbly. That's something we maybe we put on ourselves or others, and an expectation maybe in our culture too. Yeah. Uh, Anthony, what's your thought on this? You think we've become too perfect in leading worship, and if someone tries to be authentic, can they be? Can they be vulnerable? Is it good to be vulnerable to your church? Or will you be seen as weak? Well, I, I, I mean, I think that the best, at least the leaders that have, have been able to speak into my life have always been the types that, um, you know, I perceive as being the most authentic, you know, that, that are just about, um, the, their, they wear it all on their, their sleeve. Um, I, I, think, I think as far as being perfect, I think the, the hard part about it is that we wrestle with wanting to appeal to a mass of people. And, and it's tough because it's, it's easy to throw stones at the, at the production aspect of things when our culture has become um, used to the, um, the entertainment value. And I'm not saying that it's right or wrong in a church, but I think the church is trying to appeal to a culture that's used to seeing commercials every five minutes. Mm -hmm. I think it's, um, I think it's appealing. It's, it, you know, like we're trying to move quick. Mm -hmm. And I think that the culture that we grew up in, in our churches anyways, the personal cultures that we had, there was a little bit more um, imperfection be, ba based on, yeah. probably based, at least in my particular experience, based on numbers. Mm -hmm. So it was the, the, the person in the room that could sing the best, but that actually really, at times, wasn't the best singer out, mm -hmm. like, you know, to the rest of the world. It was kind of, it was, you know, really interesting at times. But... It's because we didn't have auto-tune back then. That's right. That's <laughs> all it is. But I, so I think, I think church, churches wrestle with wanting to appeal and draw people in with a good heart to want to eventually uh, minister to them and have them fall in love with Jesus. That's the, the, the foundation of it. But I don't think that, I think the, the issue then is, isn't about the lights and the production. It's about are we doing life with them, you know, on the back end of things. You know, is it that we're, you know, I, I look at worship music too as it's lost a little bit of its, of its potency because it used to be about singing songs um, um, based on where the church, maybe even the particular church, like into, not the big C, but just like the church located on the corner of whatever such and such street. It used to be about, let's sing a song because we came for, out of this and God rescued us from this. And so they would, they would write a song and then sing that song. Mm -hmm. And then somewhere along the way, an A&R guy from a label happened to go to that church and said, man, more people need to be singing this song. And then started promoting that song. And then next thing you know, we have these massive re worship records that are selling more copies than a rock record, yeah. you know? Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, I think I wouldn't be afraid in churches to get back to the idea that if you are a songwriter and you are a worship leader, not so much to try and market that song outside of your church. Start with your church. Say, hey, guys, I wrote this song. It's imperfect, you know. <laughs> it's very rough. Mm -hmm. But based on what we've been going through as a church, this is the prayer that has been laid on my heart. And I think those are some of the most, not only that, I think it draw. that has the tendency, tendency to draw uh, everybody in the room in one minute. Mm -hmm. uh, it becomes communal. Because it's like, man, that's us. Like that, he's singing what, or she is singing what we've been going through. It's, exactly. It's specific. You exactly. Know? And so, I don't know. I don't know about the lights and the whatever. I think, I think it's more about our is the songs we're picking as a worship leader. Are they the ones that our church should be singing? Because if that's the case, man, people will experience God. If it's just about what's new and fresh, right, and it's a fast song, and I need to, I need another fast song. Mm -hmm. You know, then that's maybe a different story. But I think God can even use that. I don't yeah. know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I hope so, anyways. <laughs> or else, a lot of us are screwed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so. love it. So Ryan, Claire, yeah, with worship leader and friends, what's up? 
<laughs> we finally met tonight. So what do you have to say about this? Uh, there's a lot of good stuff here. I really like what you know Chris had mentioned, even just with messing up. There's been so many times where um, in a service and leading the last 20 years of worship uh, in myself where I've messed up, but it's created that some of the best moments <laughs> where people just let loose. It was like an icebreaker in the moment. Um, and then even just being authentic, uh, you know, I think it was last week I shared just how wrecked I was over the Las Vegas shooting. Mm -hmm. You know, I just said, guys, in my welcome, I said, I'm just feeling a little uh, heavy this mm -hmm. morning. And the amount of people that came up to me after um, just was, was mind-blowing, just saying, yeah, my, my heart has been just so heavy this week just thinking about that. And so us as worship leaders being authentic and, uh, and sharing even, you know, our, our world's not perfect and uh, uh, addressing things that are happening in, in the world as much as we can or if our pastor allows. But, um, yeah, a lot of good stuff here that we've been, we've been talking about. Yeah. Um, so I come from a church. Our church is very, uh, we do a lot of moving lights, uh, kind of the, the venue style church. Um, but my style is... the anti-what you're just talking about. <laughs> I mean, no. Yeah. Our, our churches are pretty similar from uh, yeah. what I've seen. Yeah, I mean, yeah. they're really yeah. similar uh, from where we both lead. So there's, there's some similarities there. Oh, for sure. And, uh, you know, my pastor is definitely, we, we strive in uh, relevance. Mm -hmm. You know, that's mm -hmm. one of, it's actually one of our values of our church is relevance. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we're looking at ways how can we uh, reach unchurched people. Mm -hmm. um, but, so who defi but who defines what's relevant? Mm hmm. How do we know what relevant really is? If people just want to be authentic, Chris, how do we move forward? I mean, we talk about like, is this really an item that we need to get back to basics? But getting back to basics, I don't know even the way that sounds, that can mean anything, but what does being relevant really mean and how is that defined? I mean, I think the most important thing that we can do in these trainings is just teach people to, it's okay to be yourself. Mm -hmm. I think that's, I mean, I can hear a 75-year-old man say something, but if he says it from his heart or he's just being real, mm -hmm. like, relevance is out the window because it cuts mm -hmm. through all that. Mm -hmm. Anyways, I mean, we're going to go up there tonight and play songs that sound like they're stuck in mm -hmm. 1960 or 50, yeah. but somehow because we sing it with it's what's on our hearts and we're just right. being real with it, it cuts through some of that, you know, just yeah. like some of the current modern trends of so synthed out everything to me doesn't connect to me because it's too much of that but if the people doing it are doing it in a way that's like it's not about being trending it's about oh i genuinely love this 80s record and i genuinely like these sounds and i want to go for that for myself i think it comes it translates through but i think if if, if it's just about keeping up with the joneses in the church sense mm -hmm you lose all that so really when you talk about these trainings if you can cut through all of that noise and just get to like we're not going to sit here and teach you necessarily how to write the best song or how to do this or how to do that we're gonna more or less give, help you gain the confidence to say i have what it takes to lead my church and the more you lead out of confidence the lord speaks through that it's like when you see bono up there just grabbing the bull by the horns in that moment. Mm -hmm. Half the time, I don't think he knows what he's going to say. I think he's, I mean, certainly he mm -hmm. does after a while, but then those new moments arise where he's just speaking in the moment. He's in this place with all these people and just like, here it is. And I think that there's, there's, because of our leadership in the church, you're worried about losing your job or what your pastor's going to think if you sing. You know, I worked at a church that, the pastor criticized me for singing "Amen" too many times. Wow! If you're if you're starting to deal with that crap, yeah, you're done. You got I mean, because then you're going to be too worried about you pleasing him, than you are about just being yourself. You're scared. Okay, well, he doesn't want me to do this, and it has nothing to do with not respecting authority. But just mm -hmm. as much as you respect his authority to preach the word, he has to respect your authority to trust you and say, "Well, pastor, maybe I don't want to do two fast songs up in the beginning and three, you know." Like, let me kind of go with what I'm feeling this week. Maybe I do open with a slow song, or maybe open with a song that's just a testimony of what I'm going, what's going on with me. You know, singing can be just as much teaching as the sermon can mm -hmm. be. 
And I think we lose sight of that because he just wants you to click it on, get them with their hands in the air, and, and that can become an idol too, is worshiping the idea that we need to provoke this kind of response. All worship is is acknowledging who God is, right? But, but do people know how to respond, though? If you want to evoke that kind of response, do you really know that's what they want? What do you mean? As well, far as, like, lifting their hands or? Well, anything. I mean, you know, it's going back to relevancy. I mean, how do you define what relevancy is between, like, somebody's waist size to their age, uh, you know, to a certain kind of music, and you call that relevant? That, like, you have to dress a certain way or to appeal a certain way to be relevant? Or is it really more about the heart? Right. Well, I think, too, that we get away from, like, I think it goes back to the response, though, because that's how we gauge if something's a worship song. If it's, like, getting people to lift their hands and raise their voices, when people come to our concerts, they don't really do that stuff. There are times I wish they would, and I want to be like, get off your, and raise your hands, but that's not going to help anybody. You yeah. know, ultimately, it it's really not for, comes... It's not for you to it, say. Right, yeah. right. So why are we trying to gauge that as a whole? Exactly. Like, yeah. Because, we call because that a successful if you have, service. you know, yeah. elevation where you can get, 50, 50, you know, 7,000 people with their hands in the air and saying, like, now is the time to lift your hands. I mean, I can't judge that and say that that's not or it is a worship experience because I haven't been there to experience it. But I'm saying the problem is when we start matching everything hmm. versus that, which is where I think in conferences we've gotten too much into this routine of even with a lot of conferences, the labels control the conferences. Mm -hmm. The labels buy into it, so they get a certain amount of spots to pitch their artists in these places. Mm -hmm. So really, then you could say, mm -hmm. how much is money controlling all this, yeah, too? exactly. I mean, we can go down the line and say it goes into all these different things versus, hey, I like this one worship leader because he's just great, but no one's going to come because of the name, so I get that. But you right. know what I mean? Like it, right. it can play out into a lot of different mm -hmm. facets, but I think in these mm -hmm. cases of this conference... It's like, how can we teach people to just, you know, I have an Afro and it, it's stuck in the 70s and there's been times where having an Afro was cool and then times where a bunch of people who were famous had Afros and I got compared to all those famous people and I was like, well, I had it 15 years ago too. You just didn't know it. That's because you're, but, you're, the, you're the Afro Elvis. But, you know, <laughs> yeah, you're just, goes out of style, but yeah. I'm, just, I'm just being me no matter what. Yeah. You know, just yeah. like yeah. Ryan's exactly. going to be him even mm -hmm. when it's trending and when it's not trending. It's like that's what how he loves to sing. Mm -hmm. You know, he loves Johnny Cash. He loves – he has a, these really strong influences, and he, that's how he channels what he loves, mm -hmm. you know, like we all do. But it's like it's hard to say, like – because I don't think anything that I'm doing – is trending at all like i don't think no. anything that i'm writing is going to be in the top 50 of ccli i i've tried i've tried a lot to be like man i would love to write a song that you know just being honest like but who then, hasn't thought that but then you you're know? not being who god's called you to be right if you're if you're trying to target yourself to be trending then you're not truly being yourself yeah. but we um, get this impression that by writing that that the lord is that 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 the Holy Spirit is more on that than it is on something that isn't trending, which isn't true. No, yeah. God copyrighted that for me, so it is right. true. Right. So, right. He, you know. uh, so uh, <clears throat> I want to know this. I was having lunch with um, Daryl today, who is in, he's like in his mid-60s, and he's a guitar player on the worship team. And so he was saying, yeah, well, I'm just now getting back, but I'm only playing like, maybe once a month, and I said, well, you know, what have you, you know, what, I just got to know, like, what have you done all your life? And he said, you know, he's, he's a carpenter. He, he builds homes and everything else. And he said, but I wish, and then he stopped talking. And I said, you wish what? And he said, well, if I didn't, and he had a hard time saying it, and I said, what did you want to do that you feel like you passed up years ago? And he said, playing in a band, mm -hmm. making music. And I said, so you're how old? And I said, so why is it late now? Why is it too late? There's so many worship leaders that are aging. There are so many guys doing music that are aging, and they think, I don't make the cut because I don't look this, I don't dress that, I don't listen to this, whatever it is, and they're afraid that maybe their pastors are going to let them go or they can't get hired by a church, they have nowhere else to run to, nowhere else to minister because they feel like their time is up. Is that true? I would say, too, the idea of, uh, like when you were talking about relevancy with this guy, too, mm -hmm. 
One of my best friends just talk, told me the other day, he said, um, the way you can tell a church, the way that you can tell if a church is relevant is if when people come to that church, no matter the style or form of whatever it is, if they come to that church um, and they walk in the doors and they leave, if they leave wanting to be a better person, to stop looking at pornography, to treat their wives better, to love their neighbor, that's relevancy. That Your church mm. is relevant. If they come in and they leave the same, mm. and nothing in that service provoked them to want to change a thing about their lives, then your church is, is struggling with relevancy. Mm. So I would say personally, like we do a festival in, in New York where we talk, where we, ha we bring in worship leaders. And, and sometimes the best worship leaders, at least personally for me, like Catherine Scott, right? It's a perfect example. Exactly. I think for her, hmm. when's the last time we've seen her in a magazine that is right. appealing to worship leaders? You'll not very, no. not very often anymore. Right. But when I'll tell you what, when she gets up and mm -hmm. leads worship, it's mm -hmm. powerful. You it lose makes where you me, are. it makes me want to change something yeah. in my life. It yeah. makes mm -hmm. me, it draws me to want to be closer to God. Mm -hmm. And so I would say she's relevant. She's mm -hmm. still relevant. I would say to the 60-year-old man that's sitting there going, I'm not sure if a church would want me. If he's true to himself, if, if what he wants to do is lead others to Christ and he lets that be why he shape, how he shapes his set list, then it doesn't matter how he looks. People are going to hear him sing and play and lead, and they're going to be like, there's something about that I want, and I want to change my life in order to get it. Mm -hmm. And so too many, I mean, too many times we do throw around the word relevancy, but... How do you know? I think it's simple. Does your church love the people enough, like mm. Jesus would, to where they have an encounter with us, mm. and they say, "I got to change my I, something's wrong. With my, I got to change something," you know, yeah. because I can't just stay the same again, you know, for yeah. another for another day. Yeah. And so I think some weekends we get that right. Some weekends we're not. Some weekends yeah. we're going to totally miss the mark. Sure. But. For the, for the most part, that's the goal. But that goes back to what you're saying. It's okay. It's okay to make those mistakes. You're going to yeah. make them. You're not perfect. You're not Jesus. You're not even Hillsong United. And it's right. okay because no one expects you. Let's, let, let's set the record straight. We all okay. love Hillsong United. Of course. Okay. Oh, yeah. we're, we're, not like, we we're not dogging but anything. No, I mean, of course. But we, want, but we want to set the record straight that Hillsong does what Hillsong does because of who they are. Right. Right. But you, me, we have to lead our churches in who we are. Yeah. And Jeremy was saying the other day in the car when we were talking about this very thing when he got on the, his we worship production mm -hmm. thing, was that he feels a lack of prayer in our churches. Mm -hmm. That we've lost sight of how, teaching, teaching leaders how to pray and teach others how to pray. When I, and I'd say that's, that's fairly spot on. I mean, I, you know, it's become like what happens beyond the line of where the stage is is what happens at church and out there like and i think with the production thing you know if your heart's in the right place and it's you know you're really centered on jesus you're going to be okay you know but i think the tendency is to see the hill songs and to see the bethels and we're visual we're you know yeah. we're just taking all this stuff in you know and it's like i want to mirror that um, all right so then i love that 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 brings me to a, a an idea, a question I have, Kevin. What do you say to the twenty year old who's watching or listening right now that says, "Where's my model, though? What, what do I look to, or or a pastor?" Rick, what do I look to? Like you know, what do you say to the twenty year old who's listening, who's watching right now, and says, "Yeah, but when I see these kind of churches and these kind of worship teams, that's what I want to do." Right. Um, it's, it's funny that Jer mentioned that, or Anth mentioned that, Jer mentioned about prayer. I, I, I've felt that strongly recently about prayer. And for a young person who's maybe just grown up in the church or, or maybe just new to the church, I think it, you have to look at who you're serving. I think of Jesus washing the disciples' feet, like even what Ryan was saying about relevance. It's like, who are you, who are you serving? Who are you trying to lead in worship? If you're trying to lead the unchurched, and maybe you have a church that looks like a movie theater, or it's not even it's not even within the four walls of a traditional church. Mm -hmm. If you're serving a church of people that has sixty plus year old farmers like my church, 
coming in there with lights and smoke and cool backdrops might not be the way to go. Right. If you're trying to serve your skater friends who are lost, mm -hmm. or your friends who are tripped out on drugs or wanting to kill themselves, and you know, you're talking about young people with suicide and different things, maybe you buy a cool keyboard or something. Mm -hmm. But I think it starts with prayer and, 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 and realizing who you are first and, and recognizing that God accepts you for who you are and and looking to, if, if you take Jesus off the throne in your heart and you put Hillsong or Elevation or Brothers McClurg or Ryan Clare or anyone there, then you're, you're in trouble because you're going to be seeking to go after what somebody else is doing rather than the gifting God's placed on your heart. And God, and if you are musical or gifted, I knew I was from a young age, just art, music, skateboarding, that, that sort of culture, you have to trust God's gifted you in a way to serve those people around you. Yeah. And not and not anyone more than those people around you. I think too often, I was thinking about this earlier, that the, the great commission of going, you know, spreading the gospel throughout the entire world. Sometimes we try to do that. Meanwhile, there's people right in your own room or in your own backyard yeah. that you're not even ministering to. That, and that's, that's the world to you. Yeah. Preach awesome. the gospel to the world, to your own world. Mm -hmm. But, cool. it, I don't know. Chris, take us home. I think that was that was pretty good. I think ultimately yeah. you have to bring who you are yeah. to the yeah. to the art form. Bring who you are, maybe if, your demographic. Right. Maybe. I mean, if there's exactly. a way to, like the Brian Dirksen song about level ground, you know, we're all on a right. level playing field. Right. If you know, with these conferences coming up, if there's a way to take some of these artists you're talking about and strip all that stuff away in a way that's level ground, where people feel like. You're not teaching me the form as mm -hmm. much as I'm watching you be who you are inside of the Lord and just being honest with that. Mm -hmm. And if I can learn to catch some of that, even mm -hmm. though it's a scary thing, we're going to have more trendsetters yeah. Yeah. because of more people just doing what they love mm -hmm. versus following the trends. You know what I mean? Because it always starts with just doing what you love and, and not, I mean, anybody in music mm -hmm. who's ever had an influence on anything couldn't get signed by millions of record labels for Jimi Hendrix had to go to England. Right. Before anybody got it. It was right. like so different. Right. Mm. You know, like think about mm -hmm. that a little bit. Like these guys that actually changed the world for a long time, no one even cared. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like yeah. So we gotta go, we got like fifteen minutes. So go to England start. is what I'm saying. <laughs> go to England. <laughs> can I can I plug something there real yeah. quick? And I think what whatever I was touching on, even what Chris was saying, and, and, and I want to ask Ryan even maybe speaking to this, and I right. think I think that, and this is a plug, but I, in that in our Old Bear community, at Old Bear, back home, I feel like that's what, when artists come, mm -hmm. that's what they're sensing. Mm -hmm. And and I have to say, in a, in a way, mm -hmm. maybe just because we don't care um, what other people think, or that we're just following our hearts, mm -hmm. That we're just used to not selling any records, right? So we don't exactly. Know so <laughs> when artists come, it's like we're not you're not going to sell any records, but you get to be yourself, right? But so there's a, there's I want to ask, to, I want to ask Ryan, like, if that is that like what he, you know, yeah. you're coming to New York from Minnesota, it's yeah. like, why, like, do, are, 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 if, if we're following and walking yeah. with our gifts, I mean, I feel like that's kind of what's been happening in the old Bear Well, community. I think his record does have potential to sell records, well, even though ours don't. So. <laughs> well, you know, yeah, for me, I mean... <laughs> you gotta... <laughs> I mean, just real quick, as, you know, I've been writing songs for a long time, but I also spent a lot of years as a worship leader trying to fit the worship leader mold. Like, trying to write songs it that sounded work. like... So influenced by Bethel and, so, you know, the stuff they're doing. That was a big influence for me. Mm -hmm. I was doing a lot of their songs. And I wanted that electric guitar tone. I wanted to play, like, Jeffrey Kendi. Yeah. And, like, you know, and that was a big influence at a time. But on the side, I was listening to folk music, the stuff that really inspired me. And that's what I was listening to. That's the kind of music that's always influenced my my life ever since the punk rock days, I guess, in high school, but um, that's what I listened to, and every time I tried to write a worship song that sounded like Bethel, it just wasn't me. Yeah. And going to, uh, and probably another plug, but 10,000 Fathers Worship School, mm -hmm. I went there, and uh, they were really good about telling us to write songs that are true to who we are, and 
And I started writing these songs, and I was encouraged by the feedback of people saying, "Dude, it's it's, it's different, but it's it's you." You know, I mean, there's a song that brings me to tears when I sing it because it came from a place that was meaningful to me and not written for is this going to work in my church mm. and now i'm getting people going hey play that song at church you know wow. so uh, i think that's where for me it's it's, yeah. it's working that's how mm -hmm. good ryan claire chris kevin jeremy anthony thank you guys for being thank here you, man. yeah thanks thank for you. and uh, guys we're doing this uh we're starting this tour together so uh with uh worst team training ryan claire brothers mcclurg uh, this is the first, and uh, we're going to be working on this, playing it out. Barry's a big part of that. He mm -hmm. left the room, but he's still a big part of it, though. Yeah. And uh, so, you know, we're just praying that God puts this stuff together, and he just lays out the plan that he's already begun right now. So, guys, just watching this, you want to know more, you want to learn more about what we can do with your church, just head to worstteentraining.com. You know where to find us. Check out Brothers McClurg, their website.com, also Ryan Clare, get their music. Uh, you are going to be lifted up and inspired because that's what God is doing in their heart. And it's just an awesome, uh, amazing gift that you guys share that with others. So thank you. Yeah, thank Thanks, you. Man. Thanks, cool. Thanks, man. Thanks for having us. Got it. All right, we'll see you guys. That's just always the fun part right here. <laughs> it's shutting it off. Press record. Oh, no, we did press record, right? Everyone's still with us. Oh, the finish.